Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Easter already and you continue to have one. Uh, I know many people are kind of doing their own thing this morning with their family. It is an unusual Easter that we're not gathering together for a sunrise service. For those that don't, don't have anything, you're not able to get together with family or, or something to do your own service that we might spend a few minutes together on Facebook as we can. So for anybody that's up, welcome. And uh, I've just got something quick to share with you. It'll be pretty short and sweet. But I want to read out of Mark chapter 16, the account of uh, the resurrection, the account of the, recover the discovery of the resurrection. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering the sepulcher, they saw a young man in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly, and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. A couple of points I want to make from this this morning that apply to us. Uh, I talked about in the Sunday school lesson how this, this gives us hope, and there's some specifics in this. Uh, because we're just like these these people. They're, they're not special. They're not... Uh, superstars, they just lived 2,000 years ago and they're normal people. And so we can take hope from their story. First off, they were, they were serving their Savior. They were serving God. They were they thought he was dead. As far as they knew, he was dead. And they were coming to the tomb to anoint his body for burial. They didn't have time on the Sabbath two days before because he was crucified on the eve of the Sabbath and Sabbath starts at sundown, and they couldn't do the work of preparing the body. So two days later, they get up early in the morning, and they're going to go finish what they started two days before. Speaking of early in the morning, they got up early, as was expected of people of their time. It was customary to get up at sunrise, unless you were drunk and just weren't, weren't able to get up yet. And so they were, again, doing what they were supposed to do. They were being diligent. They were hardworking. They got up early and probably went to the market that morning and bought spices. So it wasn't like they were the only ones around, like like some of us kind of think of it. Um, they, in their culture, everybody got up that early. So they're, they're up early, doing their work, doing what they need to do, serving their Lord, doing everything right as far as they can tell. But here's the thing. They didn't know how they were going to do it. Listen to what they said. And they said to themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And you may have heard before, this, this was a pretty big stone. I've, I've been to Jerusalem. I've been to the supposed site of, of Jesus' tomb. And I don't know if that's the real site or not, but there's others in the area that you can see and get an idea of what this would have looked like. And the stone is as big as me, just about. And it's a round, flat stone that would roll like a disc, like maybe a manhole cover, but it's, it's vertical. And so it's going to roll this way to roll out from in front of the, the door. And it's kind of in a groove and it rolls across. It would take a couple people to move it. And this is a several hundred pound stone. And they used a big stone like that to keep animals from getting in and eating the bodies, right? So they, they know they're gonna have difficulty moving this and I guess they're kind of hoping they're gonna find somebody else there. The problem is you become unclean by visiting a graveyard. So that's not somewhere people hang out. So they didn't know how this was gonna work. They just knew that with Jesus, everything seemed to work. And so they were going to go do what they knew they were supposed to do without knowing how it was going to work, not knowing how they're going to pull it off. We're just going to see what kind of happens here and hope for the best and trust. And I think that's the key. The passage doesn't specifically say it, that they had faith that God would move the stone, but they had faith that somehow it was going to work out okay. Here's the thing. They didn't know that that was exactly right. It was going to work out okay. God had already moved. They just had no idea what he was up to. Brings me to the fifth point. 
God had already told them. Jesus told them ahead of time, I'm going to rise from the dead. They didn't understand. They thought he was being figurative. He used lots of parables and allegory and metaphor. And so they didn't understand that that was what he was talking about. It just never entered their head. Even though he had told them ahead of time, they didn't know. But God did and had already taken care of it even before they moved. And in doing what they were supposed to be doing, they discovered God's plan. And it scared them. God's plan was so big, it freaked them out. And they were just at a loss for words. Didn't you want to tell anybody? Just, just, oh my God, I don't even know what to do. I think a lot of this applies to us as well. Whether we're talking about the crisis we're in right now, or in the bigger scheme of things, awaiting Christ's return. We are doing what we're supposed to do, and we need to keep doing that. We need to keep being diligent about doing what we're supposed to do every day, every week, the best we can in the circumstances we have. We want Jesus' body for burial right away like they were supposed to, like was customary. So they did the best they could and waited till after the Sabbath and did what they could do for it. What we need to do is do what we can, just like we're doing right now. We, and that's okay. We need to trust God that if we hear his voice, he tells us to do, he's going to take care of the rest. Because ultimately, he already has. He's promised that he'll work out all things for our good. He's promised that he'll never leave us or forsake us. And in the end, he's promised that there's going to be a resurrection. That Jesus was the first fruits. And we're going to follow in his footsteps and we're going to be raised from the dead as well. So, it's all going to work out, and it's going to be okay. we just got to trust him. He's already put the plans in motion, and he knows his plan, even if we don't. Sometimes when we discover that plan, it's a little bit scary. It's not what we expected. We don't understand. It freaks us out a little bit, and that's okay, too. we just got to continue to trust. And again, that may be what we're doing this afternoon. I don't know if Jesus is coming back today or not. I don't know what's going to happen with this weather this afternoon. There's a lot of things I don't know. But I have to trust God and know that he's in control. And his plan is better than mine. Similarly for his return. There's a lot of disagreement among people about the details of what prophecy is. It's kind of cryptic. It's hard to understand. It doesn't matter whether we really understand or not. The disciples didn't understand that Jesus was rising from the dead. They figured it out after the fact. And I think that's what we're going to do with this coming. Afterwards, we'll look back and go, oh, that's what that meant. It's going to be a little bit scary as things start to unfold. And that's okay. He's in control. Ultimately, our hope is in the resurrection. Just like their hope is in the resurrection. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the hope that we have in you. I thank you for the hope that we have on this Easter Sunday morning as we Remember Jesus conquering the greatest enemy, which is death. Lord, help us to walk in his life. Help us to follow the example of his disciples and be disciples ourselves. To do what you called us to do, to be faithful, to be diligent, and to trust you to work out the details. Because your plan is better than ours. And what we're doing for you may not even work out. It may not even be necessary. And maybe it is. But God, you're in control, and we love you and trust you, and we thank you for the hope that we can have on this beautiful morning. In Jesus' name.